So in today's video, we're gonna do more rapid fire Q&A. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically a rapid fire question and answer session where I collect all the best questions from my Facebook group, my email list, and my YouTube comments. And I just go through them one by one and give you my personal opinion, my answer to these questions. So today we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read you the question, then I'll just give you my answer. I'm gonna give you my personal opinion to each of these questions here. So let's hop right into it. The first is from Paulius. He's in my Facebook group. He says, hey, Sean, don't know if you've been in this situation, but how do you start a business while working full time? How do you not piss off your current employer and how do you manage your public image for your business while being employed? Social media profiles, honesty versus hiding behind we or company name or all inning and going for it, right? And Paulius, this is a great question. I actually had to deal with this situation myself back in 2016. I was still working as a project manager. So I had a nine to five myself, a corporate job at a tech company in Seattle here. And my situation was a bit different. So I was in the e-commerce space at that time. So I didn't have to switch around my LinkedIn or my Facebook or anything really. I could just keep it all the same and my employer wouldn't even know the type of business I was building, right? So uh, I number one, I don't recommend you just quit your job cold turkey if you don't have any clients or income coming in. That's the first thing. I don't want anyone watching this to think that I'm just saying go out and quit your job, right? So I don't recommend doing that. I didn't quit my job until my e-commerce business was doing triple of what I was making in my annual salary. So it took me a while to actually quit my job. Uh, and really, it, there's no easy answer to this, okay? so. If you are building a service-based business and you're going out and getting clients, uh, my number one recommendation is just to use channels that your employer isn't really looking at, right? So LinkedIn might be off the table for you, but there's cold emails, there's even cold calling if you're targeting local businesses. There's potentially even Facebook, right? So I don't think employers always look at your Facebook profile. You can adjust your tagline maybe if you don't have any of your coworkers who are gonna rat you out as your friends. So you can adjust your tagline and then use that to go, use your Facebook profile to go and prospect in groups, right? So the other thing is you can create a second social profile, but I believe that's against all the social media platforms terms of service. So, you know, do that at your own risk. But the answer for you is don't quit your job unless you have some kind of income coming in. But if you're gonna go out and go and get clients and build a service-based business, use channels that your employer isn't actively looking at. Okay, that's, that's the easiest. Not the easy answer, but that's that's my answer to you. There really is no easy answer to this if you're building a business while you're employed in the services space. Right, so hopefully that helps, Paulius. If it doesn't, please comment below and let me know if you have any follow-up questions. Second question is from Jacob. He says, if I'm in web or app development, what's the best method for outreach? Do I just send cold offers to companies? I've been using inbound marketing tactics so far. Uh, so. Jacob, this is another good question, and you could really replace this with anything, right? Web app development, it doesn't, my recommendation is pretty much gonna be the same for all of these, is get your offer together, right? Create an offer, figure out who you're targeting, and figure out what you're offering, the exact service, in your case, is web and app development. Then whip up a quick landing page that talks about what you do, who you help, and how you help them, and then start virtually knocking on doors. Yeah, doing outreach. So I think inbound marketing is great, but if you are just getting started and you don't have any clients yet and you don't have any experience, it is very hard to just wait around and wait for clients to come to you because you don't have any proof that what you do works, right? So inbound marketing, I like using inbound when you have some proof and case studies and you can prove that what you do actually works and you can show people what you actually do. So yes, in the beginning, I do recommend going out cold to companies and maybe also tapping people in your warm network, right? I talk about this all the time, but your friends, your family, your colleagues, mutual connections. Uh, there's gotta be someone in there that can benefit from your web or app development service that you can offer for a heavy discount or incentive-based pricing, or even for free in some cases. I don't always like to do that, but even, even for free in some cases, in order to get a case study, right? To use, to go out and, and get more clients. So, best method for outreach, same thing that I always talk about my channel, uh, just figure out who you're serving, the niche and your service and create a, a quick landing page or a quick website talking about who you help or who you are, who you help, what you do, and then start contacting companies. Tell them about your offer and see if they're interested in having a conversation with you, a 15 minute call, okay? 
And number one before that is to reach out to your warm network, right? Go, go out to people you know first, and that's gonna be the easiest place for you to get your first couple clients or so. All right, so that's second question. Question number three from Vince Vincenzo. How to create a system to organize the delivery of every service? So Vincenzo, what you wanna do is pick one service, right? Don't, every time you add another service to your arsenal, to your suite, what you offer, you are 10 xing the complexity, right? That's a new service that you have to learn. That's a new service that you have to hire out for. That's a new service that you have to learn to speak about and you know promote on your website. So really the way to create a system is to make it simple. And you need to have one service in the beginning that converts and that way when you're selling that service and you're delivering it to clients, you can create step-by-step -step SOPs or step-by-step -step instructions on fulfilling the service, managing the client, and all the operations that go into the service and delivering it to clients, okay? So the way that you create a system is focus on one service, deliver that a few times to clients, and then write out the steps one by one. So you can hire someone, a virtual assistant, or you know, hand it off to a freelancer, hand off the steps to a freelancer to do it for you. And that's, that's how you do it, is really to keep it simple. Don't offer like 10, 20 different services. That's, that's a question I get a lot is, how many services should I answer? The answer is one, and that's gonna allow you to systemize the entire process once you go and deliver it for a few clients. Okay, so this is number four, I believe. Danny says, or asks, best white label companies to outsource LinkedIn lead generation. I do not give any recommendations because this changes all the time. The white label provider that we used when we started for a few months, they're no longer around. So I don't wanna recommend a company and they go out of business. But here's what you do, Danny. I just did this quick Google search for you, best white label companies for LinkedIn. And you can see all these people on the first page for you to go and research and go out and talk to, see if they'd be a fit to work with. So let's just go to this one right here. Cleverly. Um, services, white label, link, white label LinkedIn lead gen. Here we go, $3.97 a month, they tell you everything that they include in this, okay? Here's one company. They're ranked number one in the Google search engine. Number two, we got Copilot AI. This is a lead generation software, so maybe not this right here. Resellers and agencies. Um, let's see what they got. So not much information here. Looks like you have to schedule a call first. Yep, so you're really gonna have to talk to these companies, okay? I can't recommend the best one because we do most of this in-house now with my virtual assistants. Let's look for one more here. Um, publicity port, I was looking at these guys earlier. LinkedIn lead gen, LinkedIn organic lead generation, uh, white label organic, their process, they do all of this here. Contact us. See if they got more information, our process. Okay, so right here, they tell you their entire process, right? They partner connect with us to understand the services. So you reach out to them, you sign a partnership agreement, uh, con you connect with their digital marketing strat strategist, you brief them about the client when you, when you close the deal, you interact with the client, uh, or they interact with the client right here. We interact with the client to answer their queries and explain the next steps. We do the work, then we share the reports and interact with the client regularly or if demanded by the client, then repeat this process, okay? So this might be a good one to look at, publicityport.com. Uh, so I'm not gonna give you, people ask this all the time, best white label companies, can you give me the best one, the number one company? No, I can't because that changes all the time. You really have to just, this is where the research comes in, okay? You gotta go out and talk to these companies and that's the nature of the services business. You have to go out and talk to, and talk to people whether it's your clients or whether it's your partners in the business, the people that provide the service, you gotta learn to communicate effectively and make sure that you are vetting your suppliers, vetting the providers and looking for people with good reviews. So go out, book a call with these people, see if they're a fit, ask them for some case studies or testimonials, and you can use that in your marketing potentially as well. So best white label companies to outsource LinkedIn lead gen. You just saw my process for finding that Danny. It's up to you to go out and reach, uh, reach out to these companies and see their process from there. So last question, are Facebook ads a good idea? Daniel asks, are Facebook ads a good idea to advertise your service? 
like especially because to target a super specific audience. Uh, Daniel, Facebook ads or advertising in general, I do not think it's a good idea to advertise your service unless you have five to 10 clients or more. The reason is you can easily spend thousands of dollars trying to get one client and most of the time you won't even get, if you don't know like your offer, your pricing, the market exactly, you don't know how long these clients stay, I think it's, it's dumb to spend money on advertising, right? You need to prove the business first using free methods. You need to prove your offer is gonna convert. And as soon as you start to get some clients and sales coming in, then you can, you can think about looking at Facebook advertising to speed up your growth, right? But as far as getting your first few clients, like your first one to three clients, I don't recommend using Facebook ads or advertising in general to get your first few clients. Okay, you need to prove that the offer converts, that you're gonna be able to sell the service and just spending money on ads, unless you have thousands of dollars to just throw away and test with, I don't think it's a wise use of, of your money. So uh, are Facebook ads a good idea to advertise your service to target a super specific audience? No, if you're just getting started, but yes, if you're trying to grow a lot quicker, right? So once you have dialed in your niche, your offer, your price point, uh, you're seeing if it if it actually gets results for your clients, then yes, you can dial in your service and scale of your business with Facebook ads or Google ads or whatever else, okay? So that's it for today's rapid fire Q&A. We answered seven different questions. I'm not gonna read through these again because I just did, but uh, if you guys have any other questions, pop them down below in the comments. I can go ahead and answer them or take them and use them or answer them on a new rapid fire Q&A, which I'm probably gonna do every other week or so. So that's it for today's video. That's it for today's rapid fire Q&A. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Give it a like if you did. If you have any other questions that you want answered in the next one, and ask them in the comments below, or you can just join my Facebook group and ask them there as well. All right, so that's it. Take care.